Uh, this is a post here on our Reddit that I've bookmarked, apparently. Oh, boy. All right, well, uh, here is Kyle, Leet Kyle. <laughs> I don't know if I gotta trust this person here. You think someone called Leet Kyle is going to have anything short of, like, a bad take on the game? I don't know, I'm being judgmental right now, I'm sorry, Kyle. Um, it's one thing to be called Kyle, we could excuse that, okay? It's not your fault you were born holding a can of monster energy. But 1337, we could have changed that. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, I don't want going second to be stronger. I want going first to be weaker. Yeah, get Chad. As it stands, it's nearly impossible to win going second unless you open with non-engine when your opponent has full combo. For example, a single snash. Snake Eye can't consistently make a dent in their own boards without opening one to two hand traps. It's awful and feels even worse when you're playing weaker decks. Giving stronger tools to going second creates sacky draw the out gameplay that's unsatisfying to win with and frustrating to lose to. Super Poly, for example. Uh, just drawing the out is the same as, like, just draw a, um, a hand trap or something like that. But you got to think about it this way to some extent, right? It's a card game, so every scenario is really just draw the out to some extent, right? Because you want to see engine instead of non-engine as an example, right? If you want to do that. But what's the difference, right? Like, you have to just draw the engine piece, for example, right? Like, to some extent, they are, they are similar, it's just less exciting when it's like, I have to exactly draw Droplet to beat the Puppet Lock, or a Kaiju to beat this Tower Monster, or etc, etc. So yeah, it's not very fulfilling gameplay. Um, not only does this encourage decks to be designed to be hyper-efficient, where half the deck can be devoted to non-engine, but you often get the sense that your games are decided by the non-engine, rather than your ability to pilot your deck and find clever lines around disruption. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a solution. Oh no, Kyle! <laughs> Uh, but going second with a handful of starters and extenders only should be able to make a significant dent in the opponent's resources to the point that you don't automatically lose on the crackback. Right now, Fenrir is one of the only cards that loosely fits... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, hold on. Before we move on to this, I uh, just want to talk about this point here. Um, having a handful of uh, starters and extenders should make a significant dent in the opponent's resources. Um, I think, to be fair, if you do play like Snake Eye and you do open like Ash, Bellstar... Uh, bonfire, for example. Like, that is a good hand that can play through stuff. Uh, it's not so much that breaking the field is, like, particularly difficult or um, crazy right now. A lot of the um, issue with Snake Eye is the absurd follow-up it gives you. So even if you do lose your entire field with Snake Eye, you can just go and do that plus eight combo, like, again on the following turn. It is really what the significant difference is. Is um, the field itself isn't, like that impressive when all things considered when you think when you consider snake eye right like it is really just like um an sp um a special summon of a body into the fire princess uh with multi-layered disruptions as well depending on if they have hand traps and, and things as well um so beating that isn't like that difficult like some decks can play through it the issue is like if you don't like kill them they just do it all again next turn um is really something unique to Snake Eye, and probably just power creep in general these days, right? Like, most powerful decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! can't just do this so historically over the last couple of years. The Armin's strongest. Um, so Fenrir is one of the only cards that loosely fits this definition, since it can make many cards unrecoverable. This balance is kind of ruined by its ability to boost going first as well. <laughs> yeah, add Fenrir to your pool of uh, going first um, wobble combo field, right? If I were to try balancing, I'd start by making disruptions less generic or less powerful. Monster negates and spell trap negates are fine, but Omni negates would not unless they come with a notable cost. Or you could have something like Rue Colossus that can negate either, but only a specific type of effect which gives room for to play around. Uh, going second, you could give cards more effects if your opponent controls more cards or make things quick effects like Bestials and Incredible Ecclesia. Brings up a very, very good point here. Um, those are some of the coolest cards, actually, is um, the bonus effects for going second. Um, Imperm, Beasteals, Ecclesia is uh, an engine piece, but also is like a extender um, if you are going second. Uh, so it's a starter for you when you go for it. Like, uh, that's actually a super strong point here. I don't know if like we've, as a community, dubbed a term for uh, that kind of card design, but it's really cool. Like, bonus effects based off of which turn it is of the duel, I think, is, is massive. And, uh, yeah. More cards like that, I think, would be super, super cool.
The roots are there, but there's so many other problems, and good card design is just so few and far between in current Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, a lot of modern card design in Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, is very uninteresting, personally. Um, that's, like, I don't know, somewhat of a controversial opinion, but I find, like, a lot of archetypes and decks, like, are not very interesting because they kind of built themselves. Um, I'd like to see smaller archetypes, personally. For example, I find, like, the uh, Yubel deck that we're getting to be somewhat um, kind of cool and interesting because it is sort of like a fiendish pile rather than, like, here is, um, you know, 25 unswitchable cards you have to run in your deck and then you just throw in 15 non-engine. Um, so hopefully that's something we'll see more of in the future. Plus what he said as well about the... Um, this is, like, the key point here that I think is the biggest, most interesting takeaway is having cards that do more things based off of, like, the fact that you're going second, I think would be really, really sick uh, card design going forward. Let them cook. I'm a fan of cards that are good going first, but better going second and balanced turn zero plays. Especially the former just makes a lot of sense and best to one. Seems to be the thing that most people have identified as here. They also honestly need to stop making these hyper-efficient one-card combos like Circular, uh, Wakaoshi, and Ash. They're all the same to me, and the decks make the Hand Trap War gameplay worse. Um... And I think that the biggest result of this one-card combo nonsense is uh, essentially the arms race that Konami have created for themselves in the design space of power creep. As they keep making stronger decks, they need to make stronger defensive cards for going second to keep these cards in check. Ash Blossom probably being the major landmark and milestone in, in this regard back in 2017, although we did get Ghost Ogre a year or two before that. Uh, so... Um, Putting, piling, more, uh, piling on more and more of those kind of cards to beat going first uh, means that in order to power creep and sell new product and push new archetypes, what they then have to do is then make stronger archetypes that beat those hand traps. Do you see the uh, irony? Do you see the conflict here? So because they're trying to beat all of these cards they've designed to help going second more powerful in order to sell the new product and cards, they have to then make the new archetype stronger and powerful into those disruptions and therefore you just make them do more things with less cards uh, is the most efficient way to do that. And well, here we are. Is that going to reach a critical mass at some point? I think so. Uh, unless they do something drastic to change that, I don't know what the solution is going to be. <coughs> Rotation, potentially. Uh, but if they do do something like that, again, think about it. What, what, where do you go from here? Do you just end up making like power crep tier limit? Like, are we going to get uh, tier limit 2.0 in a couple of years that essentially let you like play on your opponent's turn? Maybe that is the future of Yu-Gi-Oh's uh, meta is having decks that literally just play on each other's turns, so that we are no longer having turns in this game. We're just having a <coughs> fighting game style uh, Street Fighter duels. The goal should be to make the game more interactive and less lopsided. And you have basically said Konami needs to be careful with how they want to buff going second. Like Tenpai in their field spell says no isn't what I was looking for. Same problem, but in reverse. Yeah, so uh, in order to make going second uh, stronger, you either give, you, give decks crazy one-card combos uh, or make them just not have to interact with all of the disruptions and stuff that they create going first. Then you get Sangan summoning which um, technically solves the problem, but it isn't very fun. One-card combos are fine if they end on one interrupt with that one card, not seven layered interruptions. One-card in one combos might be okay, yeah, I suppose, uh, provided that, as this person says, they don't actually result in an entire, like, you know, um, museum of negates. To make one-card combos less efficient, they need to stop making cards that can special themselves and then search on summon. They'll always be one-card combos, but they shouldn't get you to a pretty much full end board that you can then improve on if you also draw some extenders. You know, it's funny, this thread is basically bringing up, like, an interesting point here, which is, like, the fu future of card design of two ways to go about it. Either you just neuter everything that's been printed in the last, like, three years or so, and then we just lower the power level down to, like, maybe, like, gosh, you know, almost like toss format level. Uh, or you go in the opposite direction and you just keep making more broken archetypes that play more and more, less, less on their own turn and more on your opponent's turn. Uh, <laughs> that's a very, very scary and bold direction to take. But unironically, if you just make tier limit 2.0 and you just keep making archetypes that play on each other's turn, to some extent, you will eventually end up with a more interactive game. You could do that. That is, that is a direction they could take. 
I think a lot of people would probably hate that, especially if you aren't playing those decks. But Tier Lament was kind of uh, enjoyed significantly because of the fact it was very interactive. Because it was kind of just playing on both players' turns. So we'll see if uh, they do something like that in the future. I'm a fan of the opposite end of one card combos like normal Alistair. Brazil! Simple. Thank you, Vampirinha. I'm a fan of the opposite end of one card combos like Alistair. Simple and robust lines that gives you a flexible enough payoff, but also very one note in what it does and doesn't combo into three disruptions. I think Alistair is, like, probably fine, right? Even at the time when Alistair was at its peak, it was, like, fine. It wasn't, like, super oppressive. Got you one negate uh, that also, like, kind of protected itself with the Honest Style effect. So it wasn't, like, the worst thing ever. Without a rotating format, one card starter dot deck may just be the tip of the iceberg. Konami is both getting lazy and running out of ideas. Mmm... Well, I mean, this really does just kind of beg the question of, uh, should we have, a uh, rotation? Brazil! It's a big thing to ask for. That's a big thing to push for, you know? That's a game-changing, uh, customer-based, splitting, divisive implementation that is... I just don't see that happening. Nape, thank you for the prime. Uh, players, we want more interaction. Okay, here's Tier, Lab, Vanker, Soul, and Branded. No, you just can't... Branded? 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 For me, it's about how much you can make with a one-card combo. Because Alistair and Circular are one-card combos, but one can make a negate with a discard cost, and the other can make multiple disruptions. It doesn't even take your normal summon. One-card combos are inherently bad design. The more one-card combo starters a deck has, the more room they have for hand traps, which leads to unfun gameplay like Snake Eye Mirrors, hand trapping, trading to death. I think Tier Limits is a very well-designed deck if Kick Colossus is banned like in the TCG. They would not have any one-card starters, so they would not need to play a lot of engine and milling cards to stay consistent, and they do not uh, flowchart themselves into the same end board every single game like Mathmech or Snake Eyes do. I think I've always felt that, like, the best way to, like, design a combo deck is, like, to... A, a combo deck specifically. I'm talking about, like, a glass cannon-style deck. Um, best way to design that, theoretically, is uh, probably just um, front-loading all of its power into the absolute minimum of two-card combos and making those combos um, dynamic. Uh, meaning that you don't have, like, a spreadsheet that you can just follow and, like, okay, here's the line, this is what you do. Which is kind of like how Tier Limit worked. Uh, Tier Limit kind of has a combo to some extent. Um, but basically making at every single deck that ever gets too powerful to essentially only ever rely on one card is... Uh, on two cards minimum, I think, is probably the easiest way to design. Unchained? Yeah, and look at Unchained, for example. It didn't get a lot of time to shine, but it was one of the most interesting and coolest um, mid-range decks we've ever had in Yu-Gi-Oh. Drytron was not healthy. Well, to, yeah, to be fair, Drytron was not a one-card combo deck, but it was something that definitely, uh, despite having two-card plus combos, was not a very interesting or fun win condition. They need to reduce ceilings of decks. The reason going first is so strong is because so many meta decks allow you to set up a board with five negates with a one-card combo, playing through one or even multiple hand traps, unless the player going second has perfect hands to counter the play. There's not much you can do. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a whole lot of complaining here, but again, in terms of solutions, I don't know how we really find that solutions. Like I said, um, delete all one-card combos, create everything around two-card combos, or go in the opposite direction and make everything overly interactive where you're literally playing on your opponent's turn uh, in the same way that Tier Limit did. Um, that's a risky move, but it could pay off. So we'll see what direction they take. All right, this was uh, very interesting.